Okay. So in this talk, I'm going to consider the definition of subgroup. This actually, I'm going to give two definitions, and then I'm going to explain why they should be equivalent. The first is you have a group, so you always start with a group, and then you have a subset of the group, and you call it a subgroup if the following two conditions hold. The first is whenever A and B are elements of the subset, which we, which you want to say the subgroup, we have, what should we have? The product is in the subset. And the next thing is H becomes a group in its own right. Under, under the induced operation, right? So, so we had a binary operation on G, the multiplication G. We first said that H is closed under the binary operation. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what this is saying. And now, we're saying that now with this new binary operation, H itself becomes a group. I'm going to consider the second definition. Does the does the binary operation define on H by just the group multiplication from G? Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to write down this other definition, and what you should then tell me is why these definitions are not completely obviously the same thing. Okay. Why you need to show something to show that. The alternate definition is the same thing. H, H is a subgroup of G. The, the first line is the same. So the product of any two elements in there is also in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the same condition as this. But now you also say E is an H, where E is the identity element of G. We are requiring that the identity element of G should be an H. And the third condition you impose is that if A is an H, then the inverse is an H. Okay? I mean, the order isn't important, but basically you have all these uh, different conditions. Okay. So now, can you tell me why these definitions are not obviously saying the same thing? Why you need to show something in order to establish that the definitions are saying the same thing? Uh, because of the second sentence, H becomes a group in its own right. Yeah, what does that mean? How is that different from just putting all these conditions? It means there is a E and inverse in H, but we don't know if that E and inverse is the E and inverse in G. Wow, that, that's absolutely correct. Awesome. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that's the problem. If, so, any subgroup with this definition is definitely going to be a subgroup with the earlier definition, with the red definition. So any subgroup under the blue definition is also going to be a subgroup under the red definition. But if you just have a subgroup under the red definition, this one, well, this kind of looks pinkish, but the, the top definition, then you cannot be sure a priori without proving something that the identity and inverse operation in H are the same as those in G. Okay? So you would need to sort of prove that. Okay? So can you just give me a quick idea how you would prove uh, prove that? Mm. Well, it's not totally obvious, right? In it's fact, not. Yeah, yeah, well, we yeah. have to find a way to relate the element of H to element of G. Yeah, well, it's a little tricky. We need to establish a bit more about our understanding of groups. But I'll just mm. make a couple side remarks here. If you have seen, say, something like rings, you've seen rings, mm -hmm. and you have this concept of ring with one, right? Mm -hmm. Or unitary rings, ring, or commutative ring with one, okay? 
And now for a commutative ring with one, if you define a notion of subring as just some sub something which which is a subset which is closed under addition and multiplication and has and is also a ring mm. under those conditions. That definition is actually different from a definition which would, which would insist that the one of the subring is the same as the one of the ring. So for rings, what I'm saying is that the you can construct corresponding two definitions in the ring case, and those two definitions are actually different definitions. Okay. So so there, there's really something of the group structure per se. Something about some aspects of the group structure that actually force force these two definitions to be the same. So in particular, the identity element being the same is the really the tricky part which you need to establish for, for groups. So that is the subtlety, that that is the issue. issue here.